everybody, Cinnamon Cooney, your art trip, and I'm super excited to be coming to you today to tell you about the detail set in my Art Sherpa brush collection. This is a brush collection created in partnership with Silver Brush Limited. You can kind of see that there in the background pop-up shop. And I wanted to tell you about what's in these packages, what these brushes are about, how you can use them, how to care for them, just the kind of stuff. Like if you and I were shopping in a store together and you got these, just things that I would tell you if we were hanging out. So let me go shopping in my pop-up shop and select a package of brushes. I'm gonna come over to my pal cam and show you what's in this package. So here I have the brushes outside of the plastic. I like to get them outside of the plastic just because the camera is very reflective. And you can see that we have six brushes in this set of very small, if you look at it compared to my hands, these are small little detail brushes. So if you're doing artist trading cards, mini works, or just needing to do some fine lines, these are great. Lots of variety in sizes and shapes. You can get all that fine line work out. Also, these are just a, really fun pointed collection. So you can see on the packaging, it tells you that Silver Brush Limited and it's me. And then on the back, information is in several languages and it tells you that these are Sterling Studio Detail Brights and what size it is, uh, sizes that it's coming in. Let's pull some of these out and we'll talk about these. So my issue, just to explain my thinking on this, is that sometimes detail brushes and acrylic kind of not friends. And over the years, I have invested in many, many, many good detail brushes. And it's just that acrylic can wear them out. Now I have a couple strategies to extend the life of your brushes. But what I find one of my strategies is, is to get reasonable brushes to have as sort of the workhorses of my painting load. So if I do have to replace a brush or exchange, I'm not feeling really terrible about that in any way. And these are definitely that. These are really reasonable and they're really well made. They hold up, but you know, if I paint a whole lot and you might be painting a whole lot, you wanna know that you can get more of these if you like them. I really like them. I'm hoping you will like them too. I'm gonna show you how these work. So these are actually a Taclon fiber. This is a synthetic um, filament that's in these brushes. You can see they're double crimped. They're definitely, you know, part of this, the uh, <laughs> silver brush line. I've got a couple of these small brights. So you can see a zero and a two bright. These are tiny little detail brights with little sharp edges. I have a really great script liner, right? You know, maybe You've been wanting to try a liner. This is a great brush to start out. And then a bunch of these fantastic rounds. These are detail rounds. You'll hear me talk a lot in my lessons about detail rounds. I'm gonna put out a little paint and demo these brushes for you so you can see how they might perform and what you can expect them to do for you. So I'm gonna start by showing you the brights and then I'm gonna show you the liner and then the rounds. And then I'm gonna show you the care for these brushes so that they live for you as long as possible in a brush. Like this is really like life extending information and tips on the care of these brushes. So I'm gonna come over here and show you the first part, which is I'm gonna get this brush wet and drag off the extra water. And you're gonna see that this does not hold a huge amount of water. And I'm gonna come and pull a little of my magenta out. You can see that I'm painting heavy body paint, but I'm not having any trouble pulling that on the brush, right? So I'm gonna take this over the canvas and I'm gonna show you a couple of the strokes and the sizes you can expect on that. So I'm gonna come right here and you can see this brush is putting down the paint. Just putting it down, not having any trouble. Look how far I'm going. Still going, still going. And it is right here that I'm even starting to see the brush has offloaded its entire load of paint. That's actually pretty far if you look at the size of this brush. Let's reload again. And I'm gonna show you some lines that the brush can do. So here we are. How fine is this line? This is a very fine line. Here I am making these little fine lines. Little dashes, come up and make some grass lines. You can see where this really does a lot of that work, doesn't it? 
Now this will work with heavy body and soft body paints and inks. And even on this particular line, you can do some watercolor work. I generally like to keep my brushes dedicated for acrylic or for watercolor and not mix and match. That's a preference that I have because I find that the acrylics can leave residue in the brushes. Not that that harms your watercolors, it just, watercolor brushes just last forever. So you can see I'm just making little tiny hair lines. Just fantastic, look at that. So this brush does a lot. I'm gonna rinse this out and put this to a side. Later I'm gonna show you how to clean up after. Now I'm gonna take out, so this is another size bright. It does exactly what the other one is, did, but in a smaller size. But I'm gonna take out my script liner. So script liners are a nice springy brush. You can use them in pinstriping and long, elegant line methods. And you can see what I'm doing is I'm dipping my brush in and I kind of swirl it around to thin the paint and load up. But you can see even this, as long as this brush is and as soft as it is, it's still able to pull out this paint. So I'm gonna roll and load a bead. There's the look. I'm gonna come to my canvas here. And just enjoy everything that this type of brush can do. It can make a very long springy little line. So if I'm trying to come up and make say a branch, the fiddly little branch that I can do. No end to the fiddly bits. No end to the fiddly bits. And as long as I'm keeping a light hand, if I press really hard, you can see that the stroke lengthens out. Generally, I work my long brushes though at the tip and I try not to push the brush into the canvas. That breaks the heel of your brush and shortens its lifespan. So I'm going to rinse that out and lay that to the side to dry. And then I'd like to show you one of the detail rounds. And you can see the set comes in three sizes right down to a tiny, tiny mini. I can show you the mini, mini, mini. That's probably the one you're super curious about, the uber detail. So I'm gonna load this up and maybe, look at this, I can still mix with this. It's tiny and I can still mix. Let me come here. Just drop this tiny little line of paint down, right? And a little branch coming up. You can see that this has got a nice little fine point. I can take it to some just hairline hairs. You know, if I had to do little eyelashes, wouldn't be that hard, would it? There we go, little eyelash strokes. See, there's lots of little strokes. As you thin your paint, right, you'll get a finer and finer, more responsive line. I'm gonna come right here. Just give a thin little line. You are just trying to get some fine little detail work in here. This would do this for you. And you can see on my load, I'm holding pigment. For a long time, the brush is responsive, right? Now I'm gonna put this to the side and I'm gonna show you how you need to clean and care for and therefore extend the life of your brushes. And listen, if you ever have a problem with a brush where you need to repair it, remember I have a video for that. I made a very goofy, silly video with a friend of mine about how to fix and repair brushes. So that can really help you out and you can always find that information in the description and in the iCard. Knowing that, let me show you how you care for and clean these brushes so they last a really long time. So let me show you washing these brushes. So I've got my brushes that I painted with and I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna start with my bright and I misted a little water into my soap. This soap is the Master's Brush Cleaner and Preserver. This is what I use a lot. I use this because I have synthetic and I have natural brushes in my studio, and so this is a great soap for that. I have some other cleaning products I like, but this is sort of, as you can tell from my crazy looking tub, sort of my go-to brush cleaner. So I'm loading my brush up with this soap, and you can see that I am, with my fingers, very gently, working this paint out. I might even come and 
drag my nail. What I'm trying to do is without harming the brush, because sometimes detail brushes are more delicate and don't really take a thrashing during the cleaning process. So I want to make sure that I'm in there, but I'm not harming it. So I'm going to get this soaped again, worked with my fingers. You can see me pulling the nail, trying to make sure that there's no acrylic in my ferrule. Rinsing this out, kind of wiping the soap off my hands. Now a trick, if you want to make sure that your brush has no acrylic paint on it, is to wipe along a paper towel and allow these to dry flat on a paper towel, because if there's any paint, it will start to wick out and stain the paper towel, and then you'll know you need to rewash this. So now I'm going to smooth this with my fingers, shape it, and this is going to rest right here, flat, to dry. So are you ready to wash the other two? I think you kind of get the idea, but I just want to show you how to do this. All right, so now I'm going to do my long script liner. I'm going to rinse this in my water very gently back and forth. I'm going to not do very, very hot water at this stage. I'm only going to use the hot, hot water if I'm trying to repair a brush, but in cleaning, I just want lukewarm water, right? Not ice cold, just nice and lukewarm, comfortable to my hands and fingers, and I'm going to work the soap through the brush. I'm going to take my nail, try to pull out any paint that's sitting in the ferrule, gently work with my finger. I'm trying to not break the heel, not damage the the body of the brush, right? I'm paying attention to this, you know, I don't want to mess up my brush as I'm taking care of it. I'm going to rinse this out here, make sure the soap's out, and again, shape my brush back into a point with my fingers and lay it flat, not up, not ever up, but flat to dry. Last brush, the detail. I'm going to rinse out, back and forth in my water. I'm going to very carefully, this brush I'm going to be the most careful with loading. I'm going to work with my fingers. Just make sure that I'm pulling out this paint, right? Pulling out this paint. I'm going to pull that off. Shape with my fingers and again, lay flat to dry. If you take care of your details, your details are going to take care of you for a very long time. And I really do like my detail brushes. I'm really proud of them. I'm really proud of my relationship to Silver Brush Limited. But listen, tools like brushes, and this is in your art studio, they're exchangeable and they're replaceable. And I don't want you ever feeling like you have to have a tool to be able to paint. The only part of a painting that is absolutely irreplaceable is you. So I'm super happy to share this great new tool with you. And if you have it, I hope this video has helped you understand what it can do for you better and take care of it so it can last longer. Be good to yourselves, be good to each other. And I wanna see you at the easel really, really soon. Bye-bye.